Sons of the Force is getting closer to full release with every passing month, and with every new update comes new features and ways to play. So here are 50 plus advanced tips for all you players looking to take your game to the next level. Let's get into it. The zipline gun is a great tool to use as a ranged weapon when on the hunt for feathers, as you'll get feathers for every hit you land on a bird without consuming any ammo. Wall torches can be placed inside of caves, perfect for illuminating dark areas or for marking paths you've already cleared or visited. You can build a base over top of a bunker entrance, which is is not only convenient, but also makes for a pretty cool basement. If you're up against a large cannibal wielding a boat motor for a weapon, you can shoot the motor and cause it to explode, dealing a large amount of damage. Just be careful as the explosion radius is pretty big and could end up killing you too. Buddies can become distracted by the use of food, making it an ideal tactic to get them to leave you alone. Dead bodies can be burned by being tossed on a campfire or even with the use of a torch or fire arrows. You can ask Kelvin to retrieve nearby arrows or spears after a fight if you're having trouble finding them, or if you're just outright lazy. Did I mention that Kelvin can also stack extra arrows for you? Cause he can. Opening your inventory in single player will freeze the world around you, giving you the perfect opportunity to heal up and recover stamina during a fight. If you've built a base by a deep source of fresh water with a spiked wall around it, leave a section of the wall by the water that's uncapped. Attacking cannibals will recognize this as a potential weak point and therefore can't resist jumping over it, but in their attempt will just find themselves drowning in deep water on the other side. And I say fresh water because cannibals won't even attempt to chase you into salt water, making it the safest place to build a base or run to when you're in a losing battle. Remember that you can sprint backwards, making for a great asset to dodge attacks when in combat, giving you the opportunity to strike back. And don't underestimate crouching when in combat as it can also help you dodge a variety of attacks. Consider creating a network of zip lines by stringing multiple in a row, allowing for quick traversal around the island. When placing a zip line, place one end and instead of placing the next right away, begin walking towards the destination where you want the second end to be. This will greatly extend the maximum length of the zip line, making them much more efficient, cost effective, and neater overall. Full sized or already chopped logs of any size can be transported quickly with the use of zip lines in both downhill and uphill scenarios. On top of that, placing a log holder at the end of a zip line will automatically organize them into storage. Throwing logs at the log holder will also allow them to be automatically organized into place without needing to walk up and hit the interact key. Just bear in mind that this only works with whole logs. You can stun a finger's mutant with any weapon, simply hit them in the legs and they will go down on one knee, opening up an opportunity for some free strikes. Ranged weapons and the spear are particularly good options for executing this. Opening crates by hitting them is much faster than holding the interact key. Consider using frozen lakes as an advantageous place to fight during the winter months, as cannibals will appear periodically slip and fall over. Use the cross when fighting against creatures of the demon category, like these guys, as it deals great damage and burns them upon use. Logs that are lying around freely on the ground will not save when exiting the game, instead disappearing upon joining back. So make sure to either use them in a build, physically place them on the ground, or put them in storage before logging off. Loose logs will also begin to disappear if there are more than 50 of them lying around at once. On the bright side, if you have a bunch of unwanted log pieces getting in your way during a build, log out, rejoin, and you'll have a nice clean slate to work with. Explosives can be used as a quick way to cut down trees, hunt fish, demolish buildings, they're just fantastic. As mentioned earlier, luring enemies into the water will cause them to immediately drown. Use this to your advantage in caves that contain deep pools of water to make your life a bit easier. While golden armor may seem useless at first, it is extremely good at blocking damage against demons, blocking 70% of the damage that they would usually incur. Healing items such as meds and health mixes will restore health over time, however this will be completely mitigated if any damage is taken during that time. While using the Knight 5, you can ride over an active spring trap to gain massive height, which could be useful to traverse heights, enter a doorless space, or just to have fun. Plus, being in the Night 5 negates any fall damage, so there's really no downside. Looking around when on the Night 5 can slightly misalign your center point, which can make it a bit more difficult to drive. To fix this, simply remount or look down at your torso while riding to recenter the camera. Lastly, running over vegetation while riding the Night 5 will automatically add it to your inventory, making it the fastest way to harvest leaves and various berry seeds around the island. 
you can combine the use of a spring trap and glider to deploy from virtually any location. And when using the glider, make sure to angle down to gain speed, then angle back up to gain more elevation. Doing so correctly can result in a much longer glide time. Picking up a spring trap and placing it back down will instantly reset it, giving it the possibility to be used as an offensive weapon. Traps can also be built within caves, providing the option to turn the tables and make it feel much more like home territory. The sled also completely negates fall damage, making it another great item to use when traversing down from a height. It can also be used to traverse down rivers, granted they are shallow enough, as it has some buoyancy when coming into contact with water. Structure damage can be turned off in the settings menu, perfect for those of you who just want to create an aesthetic base without needing to surround it with defenses. Use the drying rack to store extra meats and fish, as they won't spoil so long as they are hanging here. Meat on a drying rack will actually dry faster if a campfire is placed directly beneath it. You can stick spiked sticks through spiked walls to cause damage to cannibals that are actively trying to break in. Yeah, that was a, a tongue twister. When lining it up, you won't be able to place a stick directly next to the wall. Instead, place one around half a meter back, then use the snap point from the place stick to get one right next to the wall. From here, line them all the way across, reinforce them with rocks, and use your axe to spike them through. You can repeat this process multiple times across multiple levels, eventually creating the ultimate defensive wall. You can use firewood pieces to create thin wooden paths or boardwalks. The log sled is the best tool to use when trying to clear out a section of bushes in an area. Wall shelves can be great for use as a jump up to a second floor, or to use as scaffolding when constructing new builds. Pillars used to support log beams over top can be removed once both sides have been connected, leaving more space below for interior decoration, or to just have a more tidy look. Use struts to support structures with more stability, and allow for them to be expanded further out. When freehand building, rather than moving your cursor to find each individual slot to fill in, keep your cursor still after filling the first slot, and every other spot to fill will automatically become selected until the build is completed. You can move furniture and other small structures without disassembling them. Just make sure not to open your inventory while you're carrying it, or you'll end up throwing it all away. Lastly, if you place a chair really close to the inner side of your base's walls, you can actually interact with it from the outside, giving you a magical way in. Do the same from the inside out, and you've got yourself a secure base with an entrance for you, and you alone. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and consider subscribing. Leave a comment letting us know any other advanced tips you might know in Sons of the Forest. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.